Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, or welcome if you're new here. For those of you who don't know, my name is Heba, and I cover recent missing person cases here on my channel. Before we get into today's case, I'd just like to say thank you to my subscribers. I'm at 280-ish right now, which is awesome. Um, I remember just a few weeks ago, I had reached 50, and I was so excited. So thank you to all of you who have subscribed, and who consistently comment and like all my videos. It means so much to me. So let's just go ahead and get into today's case. Today I want to talk about Angela Morrissey, a 23-year-old mother of two who went missing from South Florida on March 28, 2021. While Angela went missing from Florida, she actually lives in California. She was vacationing in South Florida with her boyfriend and the father of her two children, 23-year-old Amir El Badri. The couple, who have been dating for five years, arrived in Florida the previous Friday. Their two daughters were left with Angela's mother to babysit. According to Amir, he was planning to propose to Angela on the trip. A day before he was going to propose, Angela disappeared and hasn't been seen since. So Amir's story about what happened the day of Angela's disappearance has changed numerous times following her disappearance. According to Angela's mother, Darnella, she kept noticing inconsistencies in the story that he kept telling her and the story that he was telling the Miami Police Department. Angela's mother kept questioning him and pushing and shing until he finally admitted what actually happened. So at first, Amir stated that on the day of her disappearance, he and Angela were at Bayside Marketplace waiting to board a tour boat. He said that Angela allegedly went to use the restroom at around 8 p.m. and never returned. Amir claimed that after he waited for a while for her to return when she never did, he took an Uber back to the Airbnb the couple was staying in on Miami Beach to see if Angela had potentially gone back to the Airbnb and when she wasn't there, he notified the police that she was missing. However, like I said, Angela's mom kept finding inconsistencies with this story and she kept pushing until Amir finally admitted that they had actually gotten into an argument that day and that resulted in him going on the boat tour by himself and leaving Angela at the marketplace. After the boat tour was over, however, he was unable to find Angela, but he claims he found her cell phone in a store. I'm pretty sure the rest of the story remained the same, that he went back to the Airbnb to check if Angela was there, and then when he realized that she wasn't, he went and notified the police that she was missing. Following Angela's disappearance, it's believed that Amir's credit card was used in Hialeah, which is approximately 20 minutes away from Bayside Marketplace. However, from what I've gathered, I believe that the card was used at a place called the Executive Palace Hotel. And when I looked further into this place, it turns out that this place rents VIP suites by the hour and they don't take reservations. I personally doubt that it was Angela that used the card here. In my opinion, it's more plausible that someone else may have gotten a hold of Amir's card, whether it was stolen from Amir or he dropped it somewhere or whether it was with Angela at some point and then someone else got a hold of it that way. Hopefully there are cameras though at that location and that the police can check out who was the one who used that card. According to Angela's mother, Darnella, her daughter has never gone this long without making contact with her. And that up until she disappeared, the two were regularly in contact while Angela was in Miami. Angela was constantly reaching out and checking in on her daughters and FaceTiming them. Even when Darnella was at work, she was calling somebody else so she could see her daughters. So it's out of the ordinary for her to not be in touch for so long. Something that doesn't make sense to me about Amir's story is how exactly he found Angela's cell phone in a random store. From what I understand, Bayside is a bustling place in the heart of downtown Miami with over 150 different shops and restaurants, and it's not going to be easy to just find someone's phone. And why would you go looking for someone's phone in the first place? Why wouldn't you just assume it's with them? I personally think that what happened here is that Amir tried to call Angela and that the store owner answered and told him that it was in his possession or turned into him, or that he may have even used an app like Find My Phone to try to trace Angela's whereabouts. If this is the case, however, surely there's camera footage of Angela in that store or dropping her phone around that store or entering or exiting somewhere around that premises. I've read that there are cameras all throughout Bayside, even by the bathroom, so even if Amir's first story that Angela had gone to use the restroom were true, cameras would have captured her at some point. So hopefully investigators find footage of Angela and Amir waiting that day in line and then look at footage to see where she went next or what may have happened. Also, the next thing I find odd is that why would Amir not tell the true story right off the bat? 
It seems like he was having a hard time trying to keep his story straight, according to Angela's mom. He would constantly say things like, wait a minute, that's what I said, when she asked him to clarify details or asked him about the inconsistencies. And it doesn't make sense to me why he would lie. Amir stated that he had his reasons for telling Miami police and Angela's mom two different stories, but that he doesn't wish to disclose his reasoning. And even if his reasoning was simply that he would be ashamed or embarrassed to admit to Angela's mom that he left Angela somewhere unfamiliar in the nighttime, it doesn't make sense to lie about it when she's missing. It makes him look very suspicious when he lies about the mother of his children. So Amir is still in Miami and says he's going to stay there and look for Angela. While I've seen some people commend him for this, others question why he hasn't gone back to spend time with his daughters, who he hasn't seen for nearly two weeks now. I know a lot of people react differently and some people would need to stay there and search for their loved ones while others would need to go back and comfort their children. So I think this is all dependent on the person. While Amir's changing story and actions following Angela's disappearance certainly make him look suspicious, there are other possibilities for what may have happened to Angela that night. If Amir went on the boat tour, Angela, a gorgeous young woman, was left alone as it got darker out in an unfamiliar city. We don't know if Angela had her phone or whether she'd lost it at that point, and we're not sure whether she had a wallet with her or her purse. And I don't know if it's possible that Angela would get taken at Bayside just because of how busy it is and how many cameras are around. But if Angela started to feel unsafe at Bayside as it got later into the night, she may have tried to start walking towards the Airbnb. And if she didn't have her phone, she couldn't call someone or couldn't request an Uber or call a cab. And walking might have been her only option. Someone may have noticed her walking alone or even followed her out of Bayside and then grabbed her when they got the chance. Florida has the third highest rate of human trafficking in the United States, and Miami specifically is one of the top five worst cities for trafficking. So it's possible that she was taken this way. In this scenario, it's possible that Amir really did expect to find Angela when he returned off the boat or got back to the Airbnb, but that she was taken against her will at some point during that night. There's also been a reported sighting of her at a gas station nearby. However, this hasn't been confirmed by police. And I've seen Amir try to pass this off as the last time Angela was seen. But again, this hasn't been confirmed by police. Angela is 5'5 and weighs 145 pounds. She has black hair and brown eyes. She has several tattoos. She's Native American and African American. She was last seen wearing a black shirt with a white design on it, black shorts, and white shoes. I'll include some identifying pictures towards the end of my video, like usual, so you can have a better idea of what she looks like. And if you have any information about her whereabouts, please call the number down in the description below. And as always, all of my sources will also be down in the description. Angela's children are constantly asking for her and asking when she's going to come home. And it breaks my heart that their grandmother can't give them those answers. That's all I have for this case. I'm interested to know what you think happened. So please let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe.